Each of the ten available paths in the new Toastmasters Pathways Educational Program has five levels. Tonight, Lloyd Smith will complete level five in the Presentation Mastery Path. He's the second person to complete any path in District 9, east, which is Eastern Washington, Northern Idaho, and Northeastern Oregon. Wow. That's since the program was introduced late March. He's been rocking through this. The project is called Reflect on Your Path, and the idea is to do just that, to reflect on your growth during the completion of the entire path. Lord Lloyd will do that by reviewing what he did in completing the path and in other Toastmasters activities as well. In the process, he'll point out some potential pitfalls that it might be wise to avoid. Please join me in welcoming Lloyd Smith and the long and winding road. We don't see much of it around here, but pathways is an extremely fraught issue among Toastmasters. And there are a lot of people who think that the change from the legacy system to pathways is the end of the world as we know it, and Toastmasters is doomed to fail. Others think that there will be thousands of new people flocking in. I think both of those groups are dead wrong. It's actually a revision of the process. The old system, as many of you know, consisted of manuals, and the manuals were groups of similar speeches, like speeches to inform or technical speeches or whatever. The new system is much more of a curriculum than a group of speeches. It has about the same amount of effort involved in it, at least in my opinion, but it's done quite differently. It also has a lot of volume to it. If you're familiar with the old manuals, you know what they're like. So this, this, these are the materials for one path. The whole thing is online, which is good, but they're also, you can download PDF versions of them. I like to do that because I like to make notes on it and whatnot. Also, I don't need a computer with me to use it, which is good in this room since we don't have any sort of internet access. This project tonight, as Eric already explained, is basically designed <clears throat> for me to communicate what I've learned, how it affected me in my life, and what I would tell other people about it. The thing is, I'm kind of a ringer in Toastmasters because I joined as a chief retirement activity. And so it doesn't have a lot of application to my like, business or professional life since that's behind me. I've also been involved in public speaking for like decades. And so it isn't, it doesn't quite have the same function in my life as it may have for other people. But I do want to kind of touch on several things more or less all together as I go along. As Eric mentioned, advice I would give to a new Toastmaster. It's not necessarily new, but anybody who's new to Pathways. There are some things to avoid doing, and I'll mention a couple of them. Obstacles I faced, that sort of thing. And then it also says uh, it wants me to, and he stalls for time while he tries to figure out how to separate these two pages. Here we go. To continue your journey by making a plan for the future. I don't know, I kind of plan to keep living, I guess, and I'm hoping to wake up tomorrow. That's, that's, that's my immediate goal, I think. I think the best way to approach this would be to talk a little bit about what I went through. I picked a path called Presentation Mastery, and the reason I picked that one is that that's where my interest lies in writing speeches and presenting them. The 10 paths allow people to do a lot of different things. So a lot of it is leadership things like dynamic leadership, effective coaching, leadership development, motivational strategies, all kinds of things like that, strategic relationships. And this, as Eric mentioned, the application to the outside world, I think this is something that is radically different about Pathways because it has those applications. In the previous system, you could extract those uses from it, but that really wasn't the focus of it. Uh, it, it, it has some complexity to it. This simple and beautiful chart <laughs> was prepared by a Toastmaster in Edmonton, Alberta, Reese Davis, and he was trying to systematize the whole thing. He did a pretty good job. It's not so useful to you until you're well into the pathways thing, so because you look at it and say, what the heck is this? And that's a pretty good question. But here's what it amounts to. On the, of the five levels, levels one and two are universal. Everybody does uh, the same projects in level one. 
In level two, there's some variation among the paths. But starting with level three, there are a bunch of elective type projects. And that's where I think the real interest in this could lie for people. Uh, in level one, everybody's going to do an icebreaker. Now, many of you have done other icebreakers. I've done seven of them because I have seven competent communicators. That's just the way it goes. Uh, but there are lots of ways to do an icebreaker, and the materials are much better in here. If you remember the icebreaker project, if you've done a competent communicator, I think it was about a page and a half of material, roughly. It's more like 10 or 12 pages of material, all sorts of suggestions and whatnot. The online version also had videos that are really pretty useful. They're well done, you know, well produced videos that say, okay, you know, try this, try that, and that sort of thing, depending on what's going on. For example, if you're one of the people who is, uh, has uh, stage fright or performance anxiety or whatever you want to call it about getting up, there's a video about how to handle fear and whatnot. If you're one of those people that has trouble thinking up topics, there's a video about how to dream up topics for speeches. Those things are very useful. That's something that didn't exist in the former program. Uh, project 2 in level 1 is called Evaluation and Feedback, and that is really an unusual one. You're supposed to give two different speeches, have them evaluated by the same person. And the idea is that in the second speech, you're supposed to apply the suggestions and, the, and analysis and whatnot that the, got, the person gave you in the first speech. And there's nothing at all like that in the, in the former system. It also requires you to evaluate somebody's speeches and speech and have that your evaluation evaluated as well. That, that didn't come out right, but you kind of see what I'm getting at. I've already go like this. <laughs> <laughs> then finally, level one wraps up with something called researching and presenting. What that is is, a, is kind of the, the opening speech of all of the speeches that you do in Pathways. Level two is different. Uh, it depends on what path you're on. There are, are, let's see, three, six, nine, 12 different activities or projects and there are three of them that are required in each path, but the, one, the ones that are required differ from path to path. The ones I had were understanding your communication style and introduction to Toastmasters, mentoring and effective body language. But, for example, if you were in one of the uh, leadership ones, dynamic leadership, you would have understanding your leadership style, understanding your communication style, and introduction to mentoring. That's because those are more applicable to leadership as opposed to presentation. Level three is an interesting one because that's where you get into, uh, let's see, there are 15 elective possible projects. Everybody has to choose two of them. And then there's one required. The one that was required for me was persuasive speaking. But if you were in, say, dynamic leadership, the reason I mentioned that one's on the far left and it's easy to see the column, the project is called Negotiating a Good Outcome, which is an interesting idea. There are others, like for the other paths, called re reaching consensus, uh, planning and implementing projects, uh, understanding conflict resolution, and that sort of thing. You can see where a lot of these would apply in the real world for people who have, uh, well, especially administrative or leadership type jobs. Uh, for the electives, there are 15 of those. They all look pretty good to me. Uh, I chose connect with your audience and using descriptive language, but there are some others. For example, using presentation software. That's a project based on uh, planning a PowerPoint presentation, a good one, and presenting it. As many of you have seen, it's really easy to do very, very bad job of PowerPoint presentation. It's called death by PowerPoint. There are people who argue that uh, the IQ of the audience will shrink if you do PowerPoint incorrectly. I, I've had that feeling myself when I've been watching some presentations. Uh, some of the other ones are uh, creating effective visual aids, uh, making connections through networking, preparing for interviews, and, and that's from both the interviewer and the interviewee point of view. Very interesting projects in there. Level four, you get to some interesting stuff. Uh, here again, there are electives. There are only seven of them. Uh, there was a re one required project. For me, it was managing difficult audiences. That's the one, if you remember, where several people were supposed to role play, people interrupting, and that kind of thing. That happens in real life occasionally. You'll get people who are not attentive or want to argue with you or whatever. And so that's a, a real world skill, I guess. The elective I chose was uh, a question and answer session, but there are some really interesting ones. 
building a social media presence, creating a podcast, managing an online meeting, managing successful projects, a public relations strategy, writing a compelling blog, that kind of thing. Those are all possible electives. I can see where a lot of those would not only be interesting, but have application in the real world, too. Finally, level five, the one I'm on right now, I'm finishing that tonight, uh, that has a, uh, some length to it. And there are only four or five electives, but the, the required projects are this one, this Reflect on Your Path, all the paths have that. And uh, the one that I had required was called Preparing to Speak Professionally, which was an 18 to 20 minute keynote type speech. But depending on what path you're on, it could be high performance leadership, managing teams, uh, developing a vision for leadership, leading a volunteer organization. That's an interesting one because that's entirely real world based. You would do the, the, the project, I, I read the thing because I couldn't figure out how it would be done. The project says, you know, you join a volunteer organization, take a leadership post, do some project or something in there, and then you give a two to three minute speech where you explain what you did. And that would be it. The entire project is done out in the volunteer organization though. Uh, I used the, the panel discussion one, and Eric and Christina were the two panelists, and I thought that worked pretty well. But there again, the project said, do it in the real world if, if you want, and just have some Toastmaster there to evaluate it for you. And that would have worked really well. Now, once you start, there are a couple things to be aware of. There's an online assessment you're supposed to take, and it's supposed to direct you to your path. The thing is, the assessment's flawed. The algorithm's bad. And it directs everybody to one of three of the ten paths. And so when it did that to me, I thought, I don't want that one. So I just signed up for the one that I felt like I wanted. There, there are some online descriptions of the paths. Uh, for the, the second path I'm on, uh, I didn't even take the assessment. I just ordered the path. And nothing happens. So I heard they're going to redo that assessment or drop it all together, and I hope so. The one thing that is possible to get into in pathways, and I can see how this would happen to a lot of people, is what's sometimes called analysis paralysis. You know, where if you have 13 choices of electives and you got to pick two, you could spend three weeks thinking about which one to do. You don't want to do that. The idea is just to pick one that looks good and to go for it. You can always do the others later for a different path if you want to. Another thing that uh, bothers a lot of people about pathways is that it's run through a program called Basecamp. And that's where you log in and you see the projects and your curriculum and that sort of thing. And that software is very badly done. Yeah, almost everybody agrees that, that it's poorly conceived, it's clunky in its operation. It, sometimes you can't see the windows unless you know where to look and that sort of thing. Uh, and it's often very slow. If, you, if any of you are in, you're not in, yes, Brian, and you probably have that experience. It's crappy software. Theoretically, they're working on it right now and trying to streamline it. I hope that that happens because it's very annoying to deal with. My bottom line about Pathways, though, is that I think it's a major step forward in the Toastmasters program. And I'm glad it happened because I was getting tired of repeating the, the other manuals for one thing. They're, they're hard to come up with different ways to do the other manuals. And I can see on this, if I were to do this same path again, it would be possible to do it with an entirely different set of projects. And that, to me, that's a good thing. All in all, my bottom line is we're definitely getting our money's worth. One last thing to think about is that if you buy a speech textbook at, say, the high school or college level, you're going to pay 50 or 60 bucks, and generally speaking, they're worthless. Uh, these paths, everybody, all of us get one of them as a, you know, a benefit, I guess you'd say, of our membership. But if you buy another one, it's 20 bucks. You don't get any kind of textbook in the real world for 20 bucks. And it's, it's worth a lot more than 20 bucks.